Hi FlossTube, my name is Andrea and I am the Stitchy Bookworm, which that's where you could find me on Instagram. Um, I kind of tend to t lurk a lot in the community. I, like, I post on Instagram, but I don't comment as much as I would like, but that's something I'm starting to work on more. Um, but I thought I would just go all in and start my own FlossTube channel, which is very intimidating, but I'm doing it and we'll just kind of see what happens. Um, I've been stitching for a little over two years now, and I actually went to StitchCon this past year, and everyone there was super encouraging. They had a couple um, roundtable discussions I attended and they where they talk about the community and just how to start a floss tube, and they made it seem very easy and not as intimidating. So I thought I would give it a try. So here we are. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I work at a bookstore. And that's kind of how I have more books than I could currently read at the moment. Um, it's a problem, but that's a, I'm also working with it. But um, that's also a problem that I don't really mind having sometimes. My dad likes to joke that they pay me in books there, which is very true. Um, I'm currently studying to get my master's in library and information sciences. Um, and I'm going to specialize in rare books and special collections. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing there, but I'm really excited. I'm wrapping up my program. I should be graduating in the fall, hopefully. Um, I have three more classes this semester. I'm taking kind of an archival description class and then some computer technology stuff, which doesn't sound that fun to me, but it'll be very helpful. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully have an internship in the fall, which, and then I'll complete my graduation. Um, so today I thought I would um, do a whip parade of sorts. Um, like I, I might, I'm probably gonna save the um, my finishes for another video because that kind of ensures that I have content already lined up for a second video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little whip parade and I, there's like, I think I have like 12 so it shouldn't take too long I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, and then we'll kind of take it from there. So this first one is actually my oldest whip. And it's also like the second thing I've ever done on like even weave. But Halloween on at Hawker and Hollow. You know it, you love it. It's lots going on and it's it's a beast. But I'm currently stitching it on Oh and up. This is by Carriage House Samplings, in case anyone did not know. Um, I'm stitching it on 32 count Legacy Lugana from Picture, Picture This Plus, which is, um, it's the called for color, but they called for like 40 count, which I wasn't really ready to do 40 count, so did something else, but it's, it's still massive. Um, let's see if I can show that there. I originally, I. When I started it, I wanted to um, see if I could do a block a month and then be done by Halloween, but that failed miserably. And this is actually the first project I did where I altered something. So this block here, I thought it looked a lot like the house from the 2017 adaptation of It, of Stephen King's It. So I decided to add a little balloon right there. So. Pennywise is vacationing in Hawker and Hollow, just causing destruction as he does. Just probably eating ch children like the usual. And then I actually decided to make that look more like an axe. Like I'm not too happy with it, so I might go back and do it, like fix that, but yeah. Because if you notice in this picture, it kind of just looks like a little flag. So I decided to change that up a bit. Um, but yeah, but I, I definitely need to work on this a bit more. That's kind of where I stop. Like, it's a very daunting block right there. It's, like, pretty much full coverage. But yeah, but I definitely want to see this done at some point. But it's massive. I love this one, though. It's lots of fun. Um, the next one is actually kind of a UFO at the moment. But when I took it out, like I was like looking through them, all my whips. I'm like, this one actually is really cute. I could see myself finishing this at some point. 
Um, it's the legendary creature Sal from Cloud's Factory. Um, I don't really have a completed picture of it, but I only got like a couple months in before I kind of gave it up. But um, this is on the called for 32 count Nocturne Belfast from Picture This Plus. And, but yeah, we have a little leprechaun, Medusa. Um, I decided to change that to Petite Treasure Braid, the leprechaun gold, to make it a little more blingy. But you can tell, I kind of got really close to finishing the hippogriff, but I stopped. <laughs> so maybe one day I'll take this out again and work on it. Like this pretty easy, like finish a character at a time, kind of instant gratification. But yeah, but this one is still pretty cute. And then the next one is... Um, Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs, and I just like absolutely love this one because it's like kind of like a creepy little witch house with tons of windows, and um, I'm stitching it actually on um, fabric that I tea and coffee dyed myself following Priscilla and Chelsea's tutorial. It's 28 count Monto, but yeah, like um. I got pretty pretty far into this and I actually might be a little hard to see but I wanted to make it seem like something was going on in one of the windows so I can't see but that window is purple because all the other windows are kind of like a, a gold color but yeah so something witchy is going on into that room and I used for that um, a Victorian motto like primitive purple for that Let's see if you can see um, it kind of blends in pretty well but it's there yeah but I really love how the modeling turned out on this fabric but I kind of learned learned that like I'm not a big fan of stitching on Monaco like it's too stiff for my liking like it handles the modeling like beautifully but it's not really my cup of tea but I'll keep stitching as long as I have it so yeah, there's that one. And then this next one my mom made me get for her in stitch. So and it is I'm shamefully close to finishing it, but I haven't worked on it in a while. So like this would be such an easy finish. Um it's a Susan Branch cross stitch kit. And it ca it came the kit came with um eighteen count Ada. But I wasn't really liking the coverage, so I went and got um, some thir blue 36 count even weave. I don't really remember the type, but it's kind of like, it's definitely like a printed fabric. Um, but yeah, and I'm doing it one over one. Wait, no, one over two, yes. Um, but I'm extremely close to finishing it. <laughs> I just have don't know why I haven't finished it yet. I'm sure my mom would want this by now, so maybe by next Mother's Day, so... Yeah, cute little bird. Um, okay, the next one um, is actually, um, it's um, The Branch by Barbara Anna. And this is actually my first Barbara Anna and I've automatically want to do all of them. Because it's a, it's a community of witches living on a branch, which means, it's like, how, how cute can that be? Like, like, that's adorable. So I'm stitching this on, um, 32 count vintage mocha linen, linen by Zweigart, and I've gotten this far, like, this was, uh, the main thing I worked on at StitchCon, because when it's, like, midnight and everyone's kind of loopy, it's pretty easy to just keep filling in the black branch, so I actually might, um, bring this back to StitchCon this coming, this year, because it's, it's, um, pretty straightforward, just lots of blocks of color, but I'm doing it in all the called for colors, and then, um, that's, a uh, one over one words, which is, so, uh, I'm excited to get this one out again, and then, next one is actually something I got from the StitchCon freebie table, 
and uh, it's called um, Nature's Masquerade from the Vanessa Ann collection, but it's from a 1988 Just Cross Stitch. Um, but like, I'm surprised I was like drawn to this as much as I was, because like a lot of designs in this, these are kind of like really like dated. So, um, but yeah, but I saw this one and I kind of instantly fell in love with it. But yeah, and then this is like another one that I'm shamefully close to finishing, so I don't know why I haven't worked on this more. But that's what I have there. So really all I have is kind of like um, the fall foliage kind of like on the bottom and like some back stitching and like um, there's red beads in her hair right there and kind of like around her belt. Um, but yeah, and I actually think I might leave her faceless because um, the charted face is only a um, couple like dashes for like the eyes and nose and mouth. But I, don't know, I think it looks pretty awesome without a face. And plus, she, like, she has her mask off, so maybe she just doesn't have a face. But I don't know. I kind of like the minimalistic nature of that. So, yeah, I should definitely finish this one pretty soon. But this is stitched on um, some 32 count Jobelin that I tea and coffee dyed. Um, but yeah, but like, the Jobelin actually didn't hold the modeling as much as I would have liked, but I think it looks very nice for this project. And then, um, the next one we have up is, let me see, I had to pull up a picture on my phone for this one. Um, it's, um, Worlds of Miyazaki by Lola Lada Shop on Etsy. And that's what it looks like right there. It's incredibly detailed. And this is actually like my first project that has like a lot of blends, but it's incredibly satisfying. So it's really fun watching this one come together. And I'm stitching this on 28 count Lilac Lugana from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And this is kind of how much I have right now. But yeah, I'm like, I'm definitely saving all the back stitching for the very end because that's gonna be incredibly satisfying, like before and after picture, because that back stitching is just gonna like bring it to life. But so far we have no face, GG, um, Calcifer right there, and Ponyo, and then Haku is kind of wrapping around the entire thing. But yeah, but I absolutely love this and. Um, I can't wait to stitch on this more, like, but I still have quite a long way to go on it, so, yeah. Next up, okay, so this next one, <laughs> I've started twice. <laughs> okay, so it's, um, it's my first hay, <laughs> so, um, it's a uh, uh, Baldu Mask 9 um, art by Babette Vandenberg. And I actually started stitching this, like, the full version. And I have it on the same fabric. That's kind of where I started it. But then I discovered there was a story keep, which cuts out all this black. And I'm like, I don't need to stitch all that black. Like, the, dis the story keep does not cut out so much where I'm missing anything. But this is what I have so far. And I'm kind of stitching down a couple pages right there because I was impatient and really wanted to get to that mask. But I'm also parking and it's kind of a mess, but I can figure it out. I've actually kind of put this one off to the side for a bit because I have another full coverage piece that you'll kind of see soon. That I've been working on a lot more but lots of reds in this one like warm colors but I could see myself getting this one out but um, it doesn't hold my full attention full coverage wise right now but yeah I'm really happy with how this one's turning out and then 
Next up, we have Witches of Salem by The Primitive Hair. And I've always wanted to do a Primitive Hair one, but it was a matter of like picking out which one to do first because there's so many good ones. So I went with this one. A lot of people have already stitched this and it always looks amazing. And I'm stitching it on more um, 28 count Monaco that I coffee tea dyed. I'm not that far into this one, but I just have Margaret Scott's name and some of the leaves, but I really love how this fabric is. It's like very grungy looking and I think once I get the motivation to work on it more, um, it will be pretty amazing. So there's that one. And it still smells like coffee and tea and smells amazing. <laughs> but now it has. And then, okay, so here is the next, the full coverage that kind of has all of my love and attention right now. Um, I was like browsing like down Sunshine Lane, like looking through the clearance thing. I'm like, I have to have that. So, um, it's a... Uh, from Charting Creations, and it's called Spooked, artwork by Bonnie White, and I just love everything about this, like, I love, uh, it's halloween -y and, like, I'm, like, you'll find that I'm, like, mildly obsessed with Victorian houses, so this has, like, everything in them, it's lots of fun colors, and for this one, I'm actually using, um, this for, uh, the full coverage fan in it. Fanatics a Facebook group um, for the 1200 stitches a month challenge so I'm kind of pu putting steady progress in this one and I still have it on the queue snap so it's gonna be a little awkward but this is what I have so far and also it's like how many needle minders do I need <laughs> like this one holds my chart these hold needles and then like I have like multiple like needle minders under here that kind of keep these in line so you can never have too many needle minders. Um, but yeah, I'm like obsessed with this one right now. Like I have part of the house right there. And then this is actually part of a fence. So I'm kind of starting to get into something exciting. This pathway is confetti hell. <laughs> like it takes me like an hour to get through that block <laughs> where there's like the pathway, but it, it, it's so worth it. Like the detail is like amazing. and. I made the executive decision to kind of stitch downwards instead of like all the way across or else I'd be stuck in the sky forever and then I just probably wouldn't want to stitch on this as much. So I kind of am able to get into some exciting stuff, but this is the one I've been kind of focusing on a lot more, but yeah, so I absolutely love this one and I'm, I still need to finish my stitches for the month. I kind of have like maybe 900 stitches for April, so yeah. That one's a lot of fun and I have a couple more left if you're still with me at this point okay next one up I have learned that I don't know how to start small projects so when the moment I saw this one I'm like I have to stitch it like I don't know exactly why I was wanted to stitch this one so much but here I am it's the Pilgrim by Long Dog Samplers. I think what I love about this one is like the more you look at it, the more you notice. Like it's like there's so many animals hidden within this, and it kind of reminds me of like illuminated manuscripts and kind of like like world mythology, world mythology kind of like origin stories. So yeah, like absolutely love this one. And I decided to stitch this, get like get a hang from um, Silks for You. And like, first of all, this is the floss I'm using, like the silk, and it's on a thread keep that I got from Keepsakes, like a little corset, so it looks like, like a little dress, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, pictures do not do this justice. And I'm stitching it on 36 count um, London Fog from Under the Sea Fabrics, and this is what I have so far. But yeah, but when I started working on it, I was kind of worried I wouldn't really like stitching monochrome pieces, but I absolutely love this one. Um, plus, like, there's um, some B5200 um, white back stitching kind of throughout, but kind of see if I could do it justice. But no, 
it's a lot more variegated than I expected, but I absolutely am in love with it. And the, like I was when I was picking fabrics, I was debating doing it on just like white, but when I saw this in my stash, I'm like, I had to get it <laughs> for this. It's kind of like a light gray. Um, it's the video is kind of showing it pretty true to how it is, but yeah, definitely excited about working on this one some more. Um, the last one I have is um, the Clouds Factory Nevermore Biscornu. Um, I ever since like Teeny Modernist posted that tutorial on how to do a Biscornu, I'm like that looks so easy. I could totally do that. Um, so I thought this would be a good easy starter one. I am not that far onto stitching this, but I'm stitching it on um, 32 count cauldron from Picture This Plus the linen, and then it's so right now I just have the headstone and the skull, and I actually um the called for color for the tombstone actually blended in with the fabric too much, so I'm stitching it with um. Uh, coloring cotton mist so it kind of adds a little bit of variegation right there but yeah so hopefully one day when I finish this I could actually stitch it up into a Biscornu and it'll be adorable um, so that's all I have for whips right now um, so my plan is uh, I'll maybe hopefully do another video where I show finishes and then like um, I can see myself maybe doing like once a month like kind of update videos um because i'm at the moment kind of busy with school and i'm not stitching as much as i would like um but yeah but i thought i would end this video with like a book that i absolutely love um i'm kind of in between books right now um but um but um, last year i was in a really really bad reading rut like i read maybe like 15 books although one of them was the audiobook for Stephen King's It, so I think that gets me a pass because that book is massive. Um, but I saw, like, it's, um, the book I'm recommending is Vicious by V.E. Schwab, and I'm, I tend to be a really picky reader sometimes, more than I would like to, and one day at work I was, like, looking around, like, I knew she was popular, but I didn't know if it was my cup of tea, so I saw this one, I'm like, ah, oh, why not, and I guess I just kind of gave it a shot. And like I fell in love with it. Um, it's about um, two characters, Victor Vale and Eli Cardell, and they're um, grad students, or um, grad students I think, and they um, have to do a thesis. And Eli decides to figure out like um, how to create people with extraordinary abilities, and that in turn is through near-death experiences. So they both. It's not really a spoiler, like they all, they both end up having extraordinary abilities and there's a lot of betrayal and revenge and I'm not normally into kind of superhero things, but this is pure like anti-hero, like villains, like it's kind of like everyone's kind of like a bad person, but you kind of root for one of them more than the other and it's just like, it's brutal and like I fell in love with these characters and then I went on to read as many books as I could from her and I she's I would ha say hands down she's like my favorite author now but yeah it's definitely one of my favorites I actually was able to like she came to Columbus recently and I went to meet her so I got to tell her what kind of this book did for me it got me out of my reading slump and kind of got me to like branch out and like try new new books I normally wouldn't read but highly recommend this one or anything by B.E. Schwab she's fantastic okay so that's all I have right now. I noticed we're coming on to almost a half hour, which is much longer than I could have hoped for. So definitely proved I actually did have things to talk about. Um, but yeah, um, so hopefully soon I will start a new video and talk about my finishes. Cause as you can see one right up here, I have an Outlander like from Clouds Factory, but I'll definitely talk more about um, those when I, find the time because also I feel, feel like a lot of my finishes I've given away so I have to kind of track down pictures and I want for this video I wanted to do have to do as little editing as possible so I could force myself to like put it out there into the world but yeah um, so this was not as bad as I anticipated 
Um, so yeah, if you're still here, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!